Hey guys, so we're going to store our users in a database and pretty much any web application these days needs one. And now we need to be able to interface this database. So the database I want to use is PostgreSQL and I really like this ORM called TypeORM. It integrates really nicely with PostgreSQL and TypeScript. So we're going to be starting our project from scratch using um, their boilerplate. So if we scroll down on their homepage they have um, a couple of different ways of how to install this. If you already have a project or prefer creating it yourself, you can follow the manual installation. But for us, it's a little bit easier just to do the quick start. So two things, make sure you have Typeform already installed globally. Um, I already have this, so I'm not gonna run it, but go ahead and run this command right here if you don't already. And then we're gonna run this to basically bootstrap our project. So this is going to create a folder with some code already in it. So here we are. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I've run this command before so it has it autocomplete but what you want to do is do type form init, the name of your project, and then the database. I'm going to be using Postgres so that's what I put. So after that we're just going to um, open up that folder and I'm going to open it up in my code editor and I'm just going to go ahead and close this window here because I don't need it anymore. Okay, so you'll notice we have some stuff over here. I just want to real quickly give you a rundown of what they gave us. So tsconfig, this is the configuration for TypeScript. We'll be switching this file up with uh, one of the ones I like to use. Um, README, we can just kill that file. Um, package.json, we can see they give us some dependencies in here. Um, TS node is going to go ahead and uh, compile our code because we're going to be using TypeScript and then run it um, because we can't just run node because we are using TypeScript and not JavaScript. So this is the TypeScript version of node. You'll notice we're using at types node. This downloads the TypeScript types for uh, the standard node libraries that come with node. And then we have TypeScript and then some other dependencies here, TypeORM, this is a library that Typeform uses. And then PG is the Postgres library package uh, for Node. Okay, and you'll notice we have a script here. If I run uh, npm start, it's going to go ahead and run ts node on source index.typescript, um, which is fine. One thing you might notice if you look at this closely is actually some of these versions are outdated. So we could go in and reinstall each one of these, but there's a tool that I like to use and it's called npm check updates. Um, I already have this installed so I can run it, um, but what you do is you just do in cu and it'll go ahead and uh, update your all your versions. So I would recommend, here's the installation right here, I would recommend installing this and upgrading them. So if I run in cu and I'm just gonna upgrade all of them, um, it looks like I need to update this, but uh, here you'll notice our TS node, node, TypeScript, Reflect, and Postgres, all of these guys were behind. So I went ahead and upgraded the versions. So now I'm gonna go ahead and run yarn and install the latest for all that. Okay, uh, in here we have the ORM config. Um, so this is another file. This is how we connect to the database. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have Postgres or whatever database you're using installed on your computer. So I have mine installed and running. And the username I'm gonna say is Postgres and the password is nothing. So this is basically the default for any database that I create. Um, and I'm gonna call this um, GraphQL um, dash TypeScript dash server dash boilerplate. So this is the name of my database and I'm gonna copy this. If you don't already have the database created on your computer, um, if you do yarn start, that'll go ahead and run the code. And what it's gonna to try to do is connect to the database and just make sure everything's working. Um, so I currently don't have the database created, so I get this error. So if you get this, that just means you need to create your database. You don't have it created on your computer. So I'm gonna do create DB and then uh, create that one right there and go ahead and do yarn start. Okay, so if you get this little uh, log, you know your database is good and you're able to connect to it okay. So, 
and it looks like we're done. So it finished executing. Next, we can just look. This is our index.typescript. Um, this stuff is in here. Now, uh, we don't have to worry about this. This is just type arm stuff. We're actually going to be removing this with other stuff. So what I want to do next is actually um, go through the tsconfig, um, change this. So here's the tsconfig that I like to use. So I'm going to copy and paste this in. Um, I'll link uh, a video in the description explaining what this does um, and why I use some of these uh, things. Next, I want to set up tslint. So I'm going to go ahead and say yarn add and do tslint and also install this other package called tslint config prettier. So this guy just makes it really nice to uh, go ahead and uh, use tslint with prettier, which formats my code. So here's the tslint file that I like to use as well. I'm just going to copy this config. So tslint.json, and I'll link both of these uh, files in the description below so you can copy and paste them as well if you want to use the same setup as me. Okay, so we have that and we have that. So we just changed um, those two files, so it's going to change how this is um, compiled and whatnot. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, reload this window so it goes ahead and reads in the new settings. And I'm just going to run yarn start again to make sure I didn't break anything um, when messing with the tsconfig file. And OK, we're able to create a new user in the database. Perfect. All right, so next up, I want to create basically the server we're going to be using. And the server I'm going to be using is GraphQL Yoga. So this one's really nice. We could actually um, build our own GraphQL Yoga server because underneath it uses all these packages right here. So it's going to be using Express and Apollo server, but it packages up really nicely and takes a lot of the work out of it, which is really nice. So I like using it. So we're just going to do yarn add, and then we're going to just try to get this hello world working. So I'm just going to paste this in. And now I'm going to get remove everything inside of index.typescript, except for this reflect metadata. Um, I'm going to keep it because we need it for type warm. And let's we'll just copy this guy, paste him in. And the way I have it set up is, oops, I have to specify the types for these. And I'm just going to say any for now. And then I'll be discussing more in the future how we're going to be handling um, typing these easily. Those are our resolvers. Okay, so we don't need this comment here. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So yarn start. So when this is done, I should be able to go to localhost 4000, run hello, and we should get hello back. So this is going to be our main means of doing things. So localhost 4000. And so here's where we're going to make our queries and basically test out our code, or at least our GraphQL resolvers, some of them. Run it. We get hello back. So that is working nicely. Um, lastly, I want to just install yarn add uh, nodemon, or node daemon, as I like to call it. Um, and this is going to be a little package that just helps making developing easier. So if we go to our package.json, I'm going to start it. So this command right here, um, what it does is it executes TS node. Um, and any time that we make a change in our code um, over here, it's going to automatically restart our server so I don't have to change it. So, oops. So if I do yarn start, It'll start up my server and notice how it says it's watching. And what that means is it's watching the files over here. So if instead of hello, I said bye and I save this, um, you'll notice it's restarting and it starts back up, which is really nice. So then over here, I can run this and we see it says bye world. So then as we're developing over here and I make changes, I don't have to come to the command line. Um, control C and, con and then start it again. I can just leave it running in the background and then it'll automatically handle that. 
All right, awesome. So this is pretty much the base setup for this. Um, and the next video, we'll just take it from here and start adding stuff. So again, the code for all of this is gonna be on GitHub and the link will be in the description below.